Hello, my name is Martina Droth, and I am Head of Research and Curator of Sculpture at the Yale Centre for British Art. I'd like to discuss the relationship between British sculptor Anthony Caro and his near-contemporary American sculptor David Smith. Caro's career was transatlantic from almost the outset. His most important supporters were American critics Clement Greenberg and Michael Fried. Early in his career, Caro made a number of meaningful friendships with American artists, including abstract painters Kenneth Noland and Helen Frankenthaler. But perhaps the most enduring transatlantic context for Caro's practice is the work of the American sculptor David Smith. In the 1960s, when Caro made steel his primary material, his work was seen as inspired by Smith, and today it continues to be seen as a continuation of Smith's legacy as a pioneer of steel sculpture. At the time, the comparison was deeply competitive. There was a fine line between innovation and imitation, and Caro dealt with this in interesting ways. He strongly asserted the points of departure between his own work and that of Smith, but the very idea of departure is double-edged. It suggests developing beyond and surpassing something, yet also depends on a common point of origin. Two works outside Street Hall at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, which belong to the Yale University Art Gallery, illustrate this point quite nicely. They are Beck Died a Day by Smith, named after his daughters Rebecca and Candida, and Ocean by Caro. We can immediately see their similarities. Both works are abstract, made of steel and of a similar height. They also share formal similarities in that they contain shapes that echo each other. At center, both have a circular element supported by linear pieces, including an I-beam at the top. Yet they're also very different. Smith's sculpture is relatively simple and Caro's quite complex. Smith's is painted, Caro's is not. With the Smith, we have a clear sense of the front of the piece and that frontal view tells us a lot about what to expect from the back. Even the sun-like yellow disc is already indicated by the yellow rim at the front. So there is a purposeful way in which the sculptor gives us a fairly fulsome indication for the whole work from any given angle. Caro's work, Ocean, also gives us a sense of front and back, but it's less clear cut. The half sphere functions not unlike a bowl, we want to be able to access its inside visually. The closed side of the sphere suggests itself as the back or underside of the bowl, and this gives the work its orientation. But in contrast to Smith, it is characteristic of Caro's work to confound our expectation of how the object resolves in space. As we move around the sculpture, it shifts and changes in unexpected ways. It does not reveal itself all at once. Another difference between Beck died a day and Ocean is that Smith's work is often anthropomorphic in a way that Caro's is not. This has been seen as one of the key differences between the two artists. Beck died a day has been described as suggesting a torso in the disc, with the beams as head and legs. Or we could read it as an eye, and more specifically an eye of Horus, akin to the ancient Egyptian symbol. Either way, there is a human semblance that seems absent from Ocean. There has been an insistence by Caro's critics that his work should be seen as purely abstract, without reference to known things in the world. But a work like Ocean suggests its own kind of humanity. It is so evidently made of discarded parts of equipment that it brings to mind formerly thriving industrial environments, such as dockyards and manufacturing plants. There is a pathos to the fact that the very existence of these sculptures reflects the disappearance of these industrial communities. Caro has said that making sculpture is like a conversation. Perhaps we could read Ocean as engaging in a dialogue with the history of its materials. <laughs>